In today's show, we're going over the common data service for Power Apps. And what we're going to do is we're going to do everything from the standpoint of what you need to know to get started with CDS or common data service from a Canvas app perspective. Because CDS is way too big. If we tried to make it all in one video, it'd be like an eight hour video. And none of you are going to watch that. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to focus on the fundamental to get you started with CDS so we can start building more complex apps and talk about more advanced concepts all built on this platform. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, and today's show is all about common data service with Power Apps, right? So CDS is the short name for it, even though Microsoft doesn't like it, it's what we really call it, CDS. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to tackle this topic, but we're gonna do it all from the point of view of building Canvas apps on top of CDS. Because in reality, it's just too big to try and cover it all. That's where I've really struggled in trying to make this video. So instead of like, all right, let's get laser focused on CDS, let's get all the fundamental stuff, so we're gonna cover what is an entity? How to create your first entity? What are all those different field types? What are the views? What are relationships? What are business roles? Right, make sure you kind of understand that foundation. Then we're going to build a super quick app from it real quick so you can see what that looks like and talk about how some of those pieces consume. And then I'm going to talk to you for like five seconds about the security model, just enough so you understand how to share it. And the idea there is I just want to give you that end-to-end -end picture of what this looks like with all the basics so you guys can start playing and doing. And then as I go and build these more complex videos around how to, you know, patch an option set or how to do these other complex, really tough things in CDS, we'll be able to point back to this video and be like, hey, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go watch this one. So this is the video if you're like, what is CDS? This is your video. All right. That's enough of the blah, blah, blah. Let's switch over to my desktop where we will look at how to create our first entity and exactly what that is. So let's do that. All right, so over here on the desktop, we are at the home of Power Apps, right? Good old make.powerapps.com. And so you've probably noticed over here before on the left, you have data and then entities. Now keep in mind that the common data service does require a premium license in order to use it. So any app that you build that uses a common data service, all the users of the app have to have a premium license of some sort. It's as far down the licensing rabbit hole I'm willing to go, but at least remind you that it is a premium data source. It's probably worth the money, but whatever. So the other thing I will point out is if you're like, hey, I can't get into here or I'm locked out. Well, things that you'll often run into is either if you're part of a larger company, they've just locked you out of here on purpose. So you might be able to get in for that reason. Or the other thing you might see is that you um, have something like Dynamics already. And so depending on your environment, that could be locked down as well. But for most of us these days, we can get over here and see this stuff even without a premium license, right? I don't have a premium license right now as I go doing this video. So when you're over here, the first thing you want to look at is what we call entities. And so entities are really just tables, right? So if you're thinking of like SQL, it's a table. Excel, it's a, it's a table on your worksheet, right? Uh, SharePoint, it's the same as a SharePoint list. So entities are just the thing that stores all your data in rows and columns. So don't overthink it. I don't know why they couldn't just call them tables. I'm sure there's a technical reason, but I would just call them tables. Make it easier on us. So you have entities. You also notice that you're like, wait a minute, I'm coming here for the first time and there's so much stuff here. And so the reason for that is that typically when the CDS database gets provisioned, right? There's a database under the covers that's providing all of this. Um, when that database got provisioned, there is something called the common data model, which is a sub or a, a data set that supposedly like, you know, all of the industry is trying to standardize on. So we all have the same type of consistent data. So for example, you can see, you know, there's a contact field, a customer field, an account field, and an address field, or entity, all these are field, entities, not fields. But all these entities are already here, and if you go into like address, you'll see that address is already provisioned with, you know, address name, address number, you know, fax, freight terms, owner, shipping, street one, street two, strip three, telephone three, all types of crazy stuff in here. So the idea of the common data model was to get us all off on the right foot. I'll be honest, I generally just ignore all of that. So you can feel free to you know, take advantage of if you're more of a standards person, but I typically am like, oh, that's confusing because that's a bunch of pre-populated data. When you're trying to wrap your head around getting started, a bunch of stuff that's already there doesn't work for a lot of people. But that's why you're seeing all of these pieces already here. And so what you're gonna to do to get started is let's make ourselves a new table or a new entity. So click on new entity up here and let's give it a name and let's just call it I don't know, the Chewy Tracker. Yeah. So you get a display name, 
you're going to see a portal display name. So it already makes uh, portal names for you. You can change them if you don't like them. And then here you're going to see the entity gets a underlying like a system name. And so it's CR662 underscore Chewy Tracker is what mine is. Yours will be different. But this will not change after the fact. You can change it right now if you wanted to. I'm not going to. Um, but that'll be what the like primary system uh, name is for this entity under the, under the covers. So nothing you really need to mess with. The display name, when you create an entity, you have to create that first field. If you think of like SharePoint, when you create a SharePoint list, right, there's always the title field. This is the same thing. There always has to be that first field and it has to be a text type. So if I know like the design and I'm going in, I'm like, oh yeah, this should be, you know, um, instead of name, how about we call this uh, activity, right? Chewy or a C, yeah, let's call it dogs. Call it dogs activity. Now notice here I'm using a fancy display name, but the under the covers name, which is also getting created for me automatically, remove that apostrophe, remove the space. So it didn't have any of that weirdness. Like in SharePoint, if you ever run into that underscore X0020 stuff, right? We don't want any of that. And so CDS does a good job there. There are, you know, ability to have attachments in your entity. You can turn this on later. So I don't typically mess with this right now. Under here, more settings, there's a bunch of stuff. We don't care. You know, go look at it on, on your own time, right? So we click create here. And so then now it is in the background provisioning this. Now what's interesting is that, you know, they give us access here. So I can start building it out. I can start adding fields right now. But just so you kind of have an idea, you know, CDS as a whole is a database. So when I provision a CDS database, it is in this environment. So I'm in the Shane default environment right now. So in this environment, there was a CDS database provisioned. And so then this entity, Chewy Tracker, is a new table or entity as they call them here in that database. Now, the fun thing here, like if you've done real database work, you know, like if you're using Azure SQL databases, one of my favorites, there's a bunch of knobs and settings and things that you change at the database level to change the performance and the index types and all this crazy stuff. None of that's here. Microsoft is doing all of that for you behind the scenes. So you just basically said, hey, create me a CDS environment, I have my uh, that provision of the database. And when that happened, you're just able to go in here and create entities and you don't have to think about things. You'll also see now that the entity is done being created, there is like, I don't know, I should probably have counted them. There's like 20 different fields that get provisioned by default. And so that is because there's a lot of stuff that they needed, right? They went ahead and they created one called, um, Chewy Tracker, that's the unique key, right? Think of that as your primary key. Uh, you know, created by, right? That's a lookup column. We'll talk about that in a minute. Created on, there's some modified stuff. There's owners, there's, you know, time zone stuff. There's version numbers. There's a bunch of different things that they just provision for us. Now, in the beginning, honestly, I just try to encourage you to ignore a lot of that. But as you kind of get a little more familiar, you're going to be happy some of that's here, right? Because one of the things you, you know, everyone likes to know who created stuff and when did they create it or when was it modified, who did it? That's pretty helpful. This whole idea of who owns it and the owning business unit. So you can get into a hierarchical uh, security model later and be like, oh, you know, I can see all the things that I own or my manager can see all the things that the, my manager owns and all of their employees own, right? There's a lot of this type of business hierarchy stuff that you can take advantage of for your security model or for your data models, you know, like maybe you want to filter out all the expense reports to only show you people from your org or things like that. You have a lot of that stuff pre-built in here. And that's one of the really neat things I think about CDS. So let's add a field. So we created the first one, right? Called Chewy Tracker. And that gave us that text, or sorry, we didn't do Chewy Tracker. We did the uh, activity of some sort, right? I forget, dog, dog's activity right there. That's our primary field. It was a text, it's provisioned. But let's make another one. So how about, um, Let's click on add field and figure out what weird thing I decided to do. So before we worry about the name of it, let's hit the drop down and let's look at the different types. Now, when you look at the types, there's a lot of options here. It's like SharePoint, right? There's a lot of different things you can make. In reality, when we're building these for Canvas apps, remember we're for Kansas apps, can, not Kansas's apps, Canvas apps. When we're in Canvas apps, we don't want to, uh, you know, take advantage of all of these. And the reason a lot of these are here is a lot of this stuff is here for model-driven apps. Um, and so CDS is the foundation of model-driven apps. We're not going to get into the model-driven story, right? So we'll kind of, you know, as we go by it, we'll maybe mention the things as we see them, you know, kind of like, you know, hey, look, kids, Big Ben, Parliament. We're going to mention that model-driven apps are features for it, but we're not going to get into the how or why. 
So a lot of these complex field types like ticker symbol or phone or URL, these are all changing the way that model-driven apps would handle the data if you stored it in there. But when we're building a, um, an entity and we're really just going to use it for Canvas apps, or right now when we're getting started, then what I want you to do is really concentrate on just some core fields. So for example, text, right? Just good old single line text, straight text. That's a pretty simple one. Down here under numbers, this is weird, but there's whole numbers, right? So think of those as integers, right? One, two, three, four, five. But then there's also decimal numbers. So 1.5, 1.7, 2.3. And so you have to kind of, when you go to use a number field, you want to pick one of those two, right? Do you either want whole number or decimal? You could do currency and then you get all the formatting, but it turns out that CDS has a lot of smarts there. It wants to know like the currency type and the conversion rates and all of these things that you're not ready to wrap your head around for. And you're probably not really going to use much in your Canvas app story. They're great for model driven, or maybe you're using this with portals, you know, or Big Ben, who knows. But as you're kind of going through it right now, when you're getting your heads wrapped around it, I want you to use whole numbers and or decimal numbers. Okay, so that's your numbers. We're going to ignore a lot of this other stuff. You can use date and time or date only. I think that's pretty straightforward. I, I'm, I'm supportive of using those. Then we're skipping a whole bunch of this stuff. Um, it has the ability to store files and images and attachments and all that. I haven't done a lot with that. I'll be real, real transparent with you. I typically store my files and images either in Azure Blob Storage or SharePoint Document Libraries. But there are is some potential to start doing some of that here. I just haven't went down that road. It's a newer thing. So. Um, the only other one here I want to talk about for a second is this idea of option sets down here. So option sets, right, that's a, a choice column in SharePoint. Um, option sets sound really neat, right? Because if you choose an option set, then you define the option set. So you're like, oh, I'm going to derive all the values at the database layer. So then my app just consumes it. That's all fun and well. But in reality, using option sets in a Canvas app is kind of a pain in the butt. I don't know how else to put it. They just have all these weird nuances of how you query for them because they're not text, they're option set values, even though it looks like text. So like filtering on them or patching them, it becomes a weird little scenario. So typically speaking, when you're getting started with CDS, I completely say stay away from option sets. Even when you get more advanced, I mean, I've been doing it for a couple years now, I think, I still don't like option sets. So I try to stay steer clear of those. Now, if you're a model-driven person, then you need option sets because model-driven, uh, derives how it you know renders the data based on what you show it here. So you would need to do this. But in Canvas apps, we just add our own items to the drop down, we call it a day. Um, so option sets, they have their place in the world, but they are really hard and complex. I would just stay away from them from the beginning. And if you're one of those people that's angry at me right now, throw something at your own monitor. Don't yell at me. I, I know that you know the purists of CDS love them. Eh, I think they're too much work right now. Um, another one you might be interested in is lookups. So this is like your SharePoint lookup columns. Um, you know, this is where you can create relationships. This one is, um, th these work a lot better than SharePoint lookup columns, I'll be honest. Um, I'm, I'm actually a pretty big fan here because the Power Apps team has done a lot of work in order to let us do this dot notation through those so that it's real easy to reference those. Whereas in SharePoint, it's really difficult to reference the looked up records data. In Power Apps and CDS scenarios, it's really easy. So maybe we'll demo that in a probably a later video. Maybe we'll do it in this one. Who knows? But lookups are acceptable. So, so right, what are we looking at? We want lookups. We either want a decimal number or a whole number. We want our date and time fields. We want our text. If you stick with one of those, I think you'll be happy with you know kind of your opening experience here. Because you know if you come in here like oh I want to do I don't know let's do decimal number. So you can do decimal number and be like um time taken, right? So that's how long did it take? Notice once again, as I create this, it went ahead, it, it did the underlying name, I can change it, you probably don't need to. You can also, now that I've done this, you can do calculated or roll up columns. So not something we're gonna go down the road for today either, but calculated columns, so you could have it pull columns from one of two different uh, data sets if you need it. So you'd be like, oh, you know, I want it to calculate uh, mileage times mileage rate, right? And just go ahead and compute how much I owe somebody on that. So you could do something like that. Um, or you can, you know, have types rolls up data, right? So, you know, combine these fields, that type of stuff for me. And there's a pretty nice little formula section here to go through all that. Um, so check those out. And, and that's completely supported. Just remember, if you make it a calculated field, we're not going to patch that later. We would patch the fields that build into that. So, so that would be uh, that one. So we'll say done. 
And so that gives us a couple of fields here. So I can just be like, all right, save my entity. And so then now it's going to make my entity and my fields. And what I want to do is as soon as it's finished saving is I want to kind of explore some of these other things. So the relationship section here, what that's going to do is that is going to, if you define a lookup column, that's going to show you how the data is connected. So for example, you can see that created by is a lookup to the user entity and it's a many to one. And so you can even see the relationship types, right? And we can do one to ones, we can do, right oh, here, just hit the drop down, right? So many to one, one to many, many to many. So it supports all those different relationship types. So you can define lookups. And probably the most common one is this idea, you know, like in the apps I can think of I've built, you know, I had employees, I needed to find their manager. So I went and looked up their manager in the um, user's entity. And so then I was able to get their manager's email address, their manager's full name, you know, all those types of things by building these types of relationships. So that is a nice little feature of Power Apps. So, and you can see it provisions several of these for us so created by, uh, modified by, you know, kind of being those first ones that really make a lot of sense for you. So that's your relationships. Business rules. This is one of the really interesting things and one of the high value pieces of CDS in my book. One of the downsides forever, right, is, you know, when I use, whether it's a SharePoint list, or SQL, Excel, it doesn't matter, wherever my data source was, my data source has always just been kind of this flat place. And then I put all my business rules and validation and all that logic out in the app, which was great as long as I controlled all the access to the data. But what if someone circumvents my app and goes straight to the data? None of my business rules and any things apply. And so then they can do bad things. And then that's how we end up with corrupt data and the app freaking out and people yelling. So one of the neat things in CDS you can do is you can define business rules at the data layer. So I can apply a rule here, like maybe for example, using our, um, our traveling thing earlier, right? So if we could say if in your expense report, if you choose type of travel was car travel, then the mileage field is required, right? But if you didn't, then mileage field is optional. So you can set a rule like that at that particular layer and then that gives you the ability to know that no matter who uses your data, whether they're going through your app, they're going straight at the data, they're using it via the API, they're using it via a model driven app, it doesn't matter how they get at your data, these rules would always apply. So pretty big fan of business rules and it's a nice little wizard. We won't go through it right now because like I said we can't spend eight hours in here, but that those business rules are a fun way for you to start writing formulas that say, hey, you know, I want to make sure these types of business things are followed and we're applying it at the data layer not at the app layer, which we've always done. Views is another fun one. So SQL servers always had views and you think, oh, SharePoint has views, but in Power Apps, we can't use SharePoint views. We can use SQL views, but we can't use SharePoint views. But the idea of a view is you can come in here and pre-build something. So for example, maybe you find that you always want to, you know, have a, in your app, you always want to have the data filtered by a certain specific, maybe it's a date range, right? I want to be able to run reports for, 2017 all the time, right? That's a long time ago. That's a weird number. Anyway, but so I had to look at the calendar. Like, it's 2020. Why am I saying 2017? Whatever. Don't listen to me. But anyway, so if you could build a view ahead of time, that was the 2017 data view. And then you can add that to your galleries or your drop downs or your combo boxes. And you can just use that view. So then that way that data is pre-compiled and CDS on the back end is doing all that work. And it's just available to you instead of writing a filter formula to do it inside your Power App. You can also do join type of stuff. So maybe you want to build a view that not only pulls in data from this particular data source, but also shows you related data. Ooh, that's kind of fancy. So that's real easy to build if you go in here to add view and work your way through it. So even though this says it's only for model driven apps, Canvas apps, I'll show you in a minute, can absolutely take advantage of it. Heck, let's just make a view real quick. So we'll say add a view, we'll call it we did this view, so that way we know we made it, right? I always use absurd names, we'll hit create. And clearly there's no data here, but you can see that it's like, all right, I'm gonna show you this column. So I can say add a column. Oh yeah, show me the time taken column, cool. And then add a column and then related. And then we'll be like, oh, I wanna see the created by. And so then for the created by person, I wanna see their, um, I think it's called primary email. There you go, primary email. And so then now we've built this pre-compiled view, we hit publish, and so in a second when we build our app, we'll see that, A, we won't have any data, but once we do have data, we'll have this predetermined view that we can just use in our gallery so we don't have to like combine and add columns and do all that crazy stuff over there. The data will just be there. So that should be good. We go back over here, yeah, I'm done. And there we go, we did this view is right there. 
So then you get into forums, dashboards, and charts. All three of these are only for model-driven apps, Big Ben, Parliament. So I'm not going to mess with them, but they are their um, they're key features of model-driven apps. Keys. This is one I've never used and I've never really wrapped my head around. But the idea here is if you didn't like the primary key that's kind of there, you could build your own keys. I, I'm going to be honest. I don't really totally understand this. But if you're the type of person that does, you know, leave a comment below and educate me or... Just go read the documentation and be like, all right, you get that. So then the last one here is data. This is where you can actually look and view the data. I'll teach you guys a real important trick. Go over here. And if you just say uh, custom fields, then it would only show you the columns that you provision. Because one of the bad habits that CDS has is trying to show you those 20 extra columns that it provisioned that you don't care about. You don't even know what they do. So a lot of times by going in here, it's a little easier. Um, and here, we'll just switch over to another entity that has a couple pieces of data so that you can kind of see what that would look like. So we go over here to data. And so you can see that there are, oh, that's one of my views. I don't want that. I want custom fields. And so then now this is just showing you the columns that I've provisioned in my data set. So just a little easier way. There is also some great stuff up here about editing data in Excel and getting or importing data. Once again, topic for another video, but some neat stuff here that I will, will definitely explore later because I think you should know. Okay, so now that we have created our Chewy's uh, entity, Chewy Tracker entity, let's go build ourselves an app from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to create, and then I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and I'm going to say start from data and do common data service, because remember, let's not overthink this thing. Let's not try and make a super complex app. Let's just start with one we know what it is. And so then here, I'll just start typing in Chewy. There it is. You can see that portal name being used automatically. So fancy. And so just after, I don't know, 10 seconds, it made me an app that is fully ready to go, right? And it's just that normal app. So here's the list of all the data. I don't have any. So let's add one real quick. So dog's activity. Well, he's currently napping about right there. So we'll just say napping. Boom. There it is. And so now his record's in there. And then we can be like, oh, you know, I wanted to see what we did some other field, if I remember. So edit fields, add a field. And so all of those crazy fields are here, but we know that one of them I, what was the one I created? There should really be someone like standing here. That's why I like teaching live, because someone can tell me. Chewy Tracker, right? That's the unique identifier one. So that is not it. It is not any of these created by, it's not any of these modified by. It is not any of these fields. Oh yeah, it's time taken. Duh. There we go. So we could add that to the view. That's empty. But then if we go to the edit screen, hold down the Alt key, press the pencil, we'll edit this field. And then we can go down here to time taken. And so then now next time they can come in here, they can fill in one of those. And it's pretty smart, right? It knows that that's a format of a number, right? It knows it's going to be a number field. I made it a number field over there. And this is a text field because it's a text field over there. But now we kind of have our app. Now, one thing I want to show you guys before we leave this, right? Because we're not going to dive in, right? Today is not about building and doing cool things in Canvas apps. It's about getting you wrapped around how this works. So one of the things I want to show you is change this uh, items back to just be Chewy Tracker. So if you set it to Chewy Trackers, then what you'll see is over here on the right, views, and so then you can choose your um, your your views. And so I'd be like, oh, well, remember we did this view. We made that view, so now that's there. We'll change this layout to be title, subtitle, and body. And so then now we can just do our normal this item dot, um, what do we have? We had the activity, we had the created by, we had all those different fields that we created, and so they're all here to let us you know take a look and see what their values are. Time taken is blank, so that's why it's not showing anything. But we get all of our view fields here because we chose to use the view. And so the idea is that you would, instead of filtering your data, it would be done. Now, a hint for you, if you're like, oh, that's really cool. How would I use that without using that little drop down? Well, look, when I use the drop down up here in the items property now, it shows me how they did it. Yeah, right? There's no magic. You can always reverse engineer what they did. And so that's a great example of reverse engineering it. So then now you're thinking, all right, cool. I understand, right? We've built a simple entity. We've built a simple app. And now I want to share it, right? So it would be your normal file, save, and publish over here, right? That would share the app. But with CDS, it uses your logged in user data in order to, or sorry, use your logged in user to access the data, right? much like we do in SharePoint. And so it, we have to make sure that users we share it with have access. So if we go back over here, what we're going to need to do is when we are here, we're going to go to boop. We're going to say, hey, I want to go over to the advanced settings. 
And so then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to settings and then I'm going to go to security. And so I can see all the users, right? We're not going to go through that because we'll do a whole other video on security in detail. But what I really want you to see is so there are these things called security roles. And when you see role, think a group if you're not used to that name. And there is everyone is by default in the common data service user. Well, if we click on that role, it's going to do this little fun pop up here. We'll kind of resize this to make it fit on the screen. There we go. And so then what you could do is if you go in here to custom entities and then we go down, 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 down. Where is Chewy? So there's the Chewy tracker. You can see that this user does not have, or this role, this group does not have any access to Chewy tracker. So if you shared the app with someone, they still couldn't do anything with it. So what you need to do is go in here and think about what level of access you want to give. Now, right now, because we're not studying um, security, right? So all of you security people freak out and be mad at me. I understand. But I'm just going to change all of these to the entire organization has access to all this. And so now they're all green, Chewy Tracker, you can see organization down here. And then I typically just scroll back up here. That means they can create, they can read, they can write, they can delete, they can append, append to, assign, and share. Whew, there's a lot that they can do. But once again, I want you guys to get this, like this is just for playing. This is for understanding how it all works. And I don't want you to be locked out. Once you get it working, then we'll talk about in later videos, like how to come in here and maybe set this thing so you know, people can only create their own stuff and they can only read things from their business unit, right? That's the type of stuff, uh, security model things that you can start to explore and have fun with. And we'll be all in a different video because once again, it'll take me a half an hour to talk you through all that. There's also the hierarchy model, right? Where you can assign things and say, hey, managers can see their own stuff and all their subordinate stuff, right? And you can start to define these levels and CDS has all of that built in, which is really cool because, you know, SharePoint has... The security model is kind of annoying. Uh, the, with a SQL connector, there is no security model. With Excel, there's no security, right? So we this is like our first time to really start building apps where we can really start to secure the data. And this is one of the real big wins for the common data service. So, but right now we just would say save and close. And so then now any user who has access to that particular um, role, and what we could do is we go here and be like, all right, take me back to security now. And so if we go to users. And so if we look at Chewy, we click on Chewy, we can see all of his different profile information. We can modify some of it. But what's more important is we can go up here to manage roles and we'd see that Chewy is in the common data service user group. The other thing that we'll do a lot of times is when I make a new entity for a project, like usually there's like four or five entities that go into that project. What I'll end up doing is I will um, combine all of those and I'll make a new role called that entity's like, um, you know, purpose, and then I'll put people in that one, and I'll give just that role access to those entities so I can really kind of fine tune and secure my thing. Because if I go and modify common data service user like I just showed you, then you can get yourself into, you know, now you've opened it up to everyone, and everyone can come in and do all those things, right? In our case where I made them all green, everyone could do everything. So that could be a little scary. So also, if you're wondering um, over here on the security side, so for users right here, um, the only users that are going to show up here are people who have licenses to use CDS. So that's why if you come in here and you don't see all of your employees, you're like, whoa, where's everybody at? Or why are only some of the people in here? It's because once they have a license, then their Azure AD data replicates into here. And then I have a CDS user that I can start working with, manipulating and doing all those crazy things. Right? Whew. Okay. That is the best half hour of CDS I could do. I, I'm telling you guys, I could do eight hours on this and probably still not cover it all. So hopefully, though, that gives you that foundational knowledge. It gives you enough to see the buttons you can start clicking so you can become curious. And so I can start building more advanced videos and start diving into topics like security or data imports or, uh, you know, using patch and things like that. There's a lot of little nuances to using CDS. And so that'll be kind of where we build from here. Um, as always, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Tell me what you want to see. Tell me things that you don't agree with that are confusing. I will definitely pin a comment at the top if I decide that I did anything wrong. So if you're like, oh, I think he said that wrong or it's wrong, and I figure out I did, I will definitely pin a comment because YouTube doesn't let me edit these videos after the fact. Also, remember, you can reach out on training.powerapps911.com if you want some more formal training. I'm going to have a CDS class sooner than later. And, you know, that would be my chance to actually do the eight hours of training. So, whew. okay, that's enough.
So with all that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.